Have you ever seen a wig in a review or in a stock photo and you thought, that's it, that's the perfect wig for me? You order it, you get it home, it looks nothing like it looked on that person in the video or that person in the stock photo. Well, today we're going to talk about how to choose wigs based on your features in your face and also how to make your wigs work for you. So stay tuned. Now you'll see a lot of videos that say, okay, let's take a look at your face shape and then based on your face shape, we'll choose a hairstyle for you. So you have the oval, the heart, the square, and basically those videos tell you everybody wants an oval face. And if you don't have that, these are the things you could do to make your face look like an oval. Well, this is not that video. First of all, I don't subscribe to that strategy at all. There are so many things about our faces that make us different. So many more variables than just the face shape. For example, there is what's called visual weight and what the eye is drawn to on a particular face. There's the ratio of the different parts of your face. My sister Melissa has an eight and a half inch face and so do I, but I have my prominent Part in my upper third and hers is in her lower third. I'll show you some pictures here of us wearing the same wig and how it still looks different even though we have that same measurement and we both have what's considered a longer thinner face. So today what I'm going to do is I've asked my team members to send me pictures of themselves and they have graciously offered to bear their faces and to allow me to analyze them for you. And we're going to take a look at different faces, different features, different measurements, and see the different things that we can do to accentuate what we want to show and de-emphasize the things that maybe we don't like so much. There's no right answer. There's no right look. It's all about how you want to look and what you want to show. Okay, so we're gonna start by looking at my face and I'm gonna show you all the different things that I'm looking at and analyzing in each of our faces. So first, if you look, my face I have divided into thirds. And the way you do that is to first draw a line across your brow bone. And from your hairline to your brow bone is your first third. Then from your brow bone to right under your nose is your second third, and from right under your nose to the bottom of your chin is the bottom third of your face. So if we look at my face, you can clearly see that the upper third is the largest part of my face, and I have a very prominent forehead, which by the way is getting more prominent as my hairline moves back. <laughs> The visual weight of my features is fairly equal. I would say I have large eyes, large nose, and a large mouth. My jawline is rounded and not angular. And that is actually one thing that I would like to change a little bit. I'd like to make it look a little bit more angular, and we'll talk about that. My face is long. I have an eight and a half inch face. And you'll see, compared to my team members, I think I have the longest face here. And then I measure cheek to cheek, which is right under the uh, outer corners of my eyes here. So it's like the front part of my face, cheekbone to cheekbone. And my measurement there is six inches. My neck is not that long and that's why wigs tend to look longer on me than they do on the stock photos. My neck is only three inches long. Okay, so now let's take a look at V. V is my resident stylist and you will soon see why that's her job. She is great at styling wigs. So when we look at her face, the ratio of her face is actually fairly equal. Each third is about the same size. She has a widow's peak, so we're going to talk about that because some people ask, what do I do? I have a widow's peak. How do I wear a wig with it? The visual weight of her features is greatest in her nose and mouth area. She also has a rounded cheek or jaw, and she says she has one eye that's droopy. Uh, so we're going to see how she styles to 
kind of de-emphasize that I. All right, next we have Marlene, and many of you know Marlene from Marlene's Wig and Chat Studio. She's been running our Facebook group, and she's absolutely amazing at that. And we have so many pictures of her in all different wigs from her years of experience. So we're going to be taking a look at a lot of those. So if we look at her ratios, she has a larger bottom third. She has a smaller forehead. I believe she said it's two and a half inches. She has a prominent jaw and chin, very angular. And she said she likes to downplay that. It's so funny how I would rather have more of an angle and she would rather have less. But that's how it is with all of us. We have things that we like and don't like, and that's why there's no right or wrong answer. She has a long neck. She has a five-inch neck, so that is beautiful. And wigs tend to look shorter on her. Her face length is 7.75 inches. And cheek to cheek, she's six and a half inches. So you can see that her cheek to cheek measurement to the length of her face is greater than in my face. So my face is going to appear narrower while hers will appear wider than mine. Next, we have Sherry, who is our topper and long hair specialist. She does a lot of tutorials on our private Facebook group. So come over and check those out, and you can always ask her questions there. Her ratio is much like mine. She has a larger top third and a prominent forehead. The visual weight of her features is greatest in her eyes and nose. Her face length is seven inches and her cheek to cheek four inches. And if I didn't mention, V's face is also seven inches in length and V's cheek to cheek is five inches. Finally, we have Eileen who is also an admin over at our Facebook group, and she's there to answer your questions. And I would say she's a specialist in red hair, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So when we look at her face, as far as the ratios go, she has a larger bottom third. The visual weight of her features is greatest in her eyes and nose. She has a rounded cheek or jaw and a shorter neck. Her neck is two inches, her face length is 6.75 inches, so she has the shortest face of all of us, and her cheek-to-cheek -cheek measurement is 4.25 inches. Now, one thing you can do is you can take a picture of yourself with your hair pulled back and draw lines at those same points at your brow bone, right under your nose, and right under your chin, and take a look at your ratios. You can measure your head from forehead to chin, cheek to cheek right from the outer corners of your eyes to see the width there and then you can compare it to our team members and see who is most like you so that when you're looking at wigs on us you could say oh okay my face shape is most like this how does this wig look on her and that'll give you a better idea you can also think about what things do I really like about my face that I want to accentuate and what things would I like to de-emphasize. And what we're going to go over next is how to do that. First, I'm going to start with one thing that I want to de-emphasize on myself and how I do that. And we'll talk about both sides of the coin. So I have a prominent forehead. And like I said, as my hairline goes back and back, it becomes more and more prominent. So one of the things I want to do is de-emphasize that. Also, the longer my forehead is, the longer my face looks. Now, sometimes I do want my face to look longer and maybe narrower or thinner, but a lot of times I like to make my forehead look smaller. And by doing that, I also shorten the length of my face. Wigs are great for this because you could do things with wigs that you can't do with your natural hair. And one of the things you can do is change where you put your hairline. For example, this is Leah too, by the way, in Light Bernstein Rooted by Ellen Villa, one of my favorites. So, for example, I can move my hairline all the way back to where my hairline is. You can see it's bigger. Or I can make it shorter and have a shorter forehead there, especially with this lace front, it still looks like it's coming out of my head. I'm going to show you a picture here where I did that with the wig Sage by Aesthetica. I marked lines for my chin and my forehead so that you could see that I matched up both pictures. 
and you can see that my forehead looks smaller where I've moved Sage's hairline down just a tad to make my forehead look smaller. And by doing that, I've also shortened the look of my face. You can see that there. There are some other things that this wig does for me to help make my face look shorter, like adding volume around the sides, which draws your eye out and makes my face also look wider. So by making my face look wider, I'm also changing that ratio and it doesn't look quite as long. Another feature that can be used to either lengthen or shorten the look of your forehead and face is to use bangs. Now it's often thought that by wearing bangs you automatically shorten your forehead and the length of your face. But that's actually a myth. Bangs can be used to both lengthen or shorten and I'm going to show you how. So let's take a look at this picture here of me. You can see on the left side I have bangs and it does shorten the look of my forehead when you compare it to the picture on the right where I have no bangs. However, it's all about how you wear your bangs. Now let's take a look at this picture of V. On the left, she has a more wispy bang where you get to peek through and see her forehead. So you have more of an idea of the length of her forehead. Even so, the apex of that bang is much higher and creates a longer look to her face. In the right picture, she has a more full-on bang, and again, the apex of the bang is much further back, giving a longer look to her forehead. Now with the full-on bang, it does shorten the look of her face, but not the look of her forehead, which is very interesting. With the wispy bang, you have a longer look to her face. If we look at Shari in these two pictures, on the picture on the left, Shari's face looks shorter, because of that full bang, and on the right, her face looks longer. There are other factors also, including the length of that hair that we're going to talk about going forward. In this picture, where Marlene is wearing bangs in both pictures, you can see in the left picture, because of where the bang ends, it makes her forehead look shorter than in the right picture. The apex of that bang in the right picture is all the way back where that rooting occurs and that rooting also helps to draw your eye back and make the forehead look longer. So you can see that the bangs can be used in different ways to shorten or lengthen the forehead. In this picture of Eileen you can see on the left hand side she has a bang that still comes to an apex but the forehead is not open as much as on the right hand side and if we want to lengthen her face, she does better with having more of her forehead showing. The fact that she has the side swept bang helps to draw your eye up to that point where the part is and elongate her face. Now this is Sleek and Straight by Tressalore. Does not have a lace front, it just has a mono crown and that's basically the feature in this. But it has bangs and I wanted to show you, just because you have bangs on your wig, doesn't mean you can't adjust the hairline. So here you can see I have the hairline right up here. But say I wanted to make my forehead look shorter. I could again bring my bang down and shorten these and I will have created a shorter forehead. So you can still adjust the hairline of your wig even if you have bangs. Now if you want your, your bangs to appear longer and your forehead to appear longer, then just scooch your wig back and you have a longer forehead. The beauty of a wig. <laughs> okay, so adjusting your hairline, wearing bangs in certain ways, full-on bang, wispy bang, curtain bang, those things can help to adjust the appearance of the length of your upper portion of your face, which then of course affects the appearance of your full face. But there are other things you can do to make your face look longer or shorter or wider or narrower. So we're going to talk about those things now. So as I mentioned before, your face isn't just made of one dimension that you want to change. Let's say you want your face to look longer. Well, by making it look narrower, it will also look longer. Or, on the other side of that coin, if you want your face to look shorter, you can also widen the appearance 
and that ratio will then make your face look shorter. Okay, so let's take a look at this picture here. On the left, my face looks shorter and wider. Now, we already talked about the bangs lending to that effect, but also the length of the hair here definitely stops your eye at the bottom of my face. So if you look at the picture on the right, the fact that my hair continues down beyond my chin draws your eye down and makes my face look longer. It's all about where we're drawing attention to. Another part of making my face look shorter on the left picture is that this style is rounder. So it also draws your eye out to the sides, creating a wider appearance to my face and in turn making my face look shorter. Now, neither of these is right or wrong. Sometimes I want to have a longer, thinner looking face and sometimes I like the shorter look. Okay, next, let's take a look at this picture of Sherry in three different length wigs. And there's a lot of things at play here that will change the look of her face, but let's just look at the length of the hair first. So in the first picture, we already talked about that full bang, shortening the look of her face. But also, if you look at the length of the hair, it stops your eye shorter on her face and makes her face appear shorter. Also, she has that wispiness on the side that draws your eye out. So it makes her face look wider, which again changes that ratio and makes her face look shorter. In the second picture, she has a straighter look, which your eye just follows that hair to below her chin. And she has a part of her forehead showing, so it makes her face appear longer. In the last picture, she has more of her forehead showing and her hair comes down longer, drawing your eye down and making her face appear longer and also showing off her neck. Now another thing that can be done is not just how long your style goes, but how high you style it. If we take a look at this picture of V, you can see she really adds height to the top of this wig here and that elongates the look of her face. So even with a shorter wig, we can elongate the face by adding height at the top. Now, if we look at this picture of Eileen, you can see how she's used all of these things to make her face look longer on the right. She's opened up her forehead more, she's wearing a longer wig, and she's added height with style to this wig. And her face definitely looks longer and narrower in the picture on the right. Now, say you want to make your face look shorter. You might think, well, just wear shorter hair. Well, not always. And that's what's so important about looking at these pictures. In these pictures of Marlene, she's actually wearing a shorter style on the left. But by adding volume around the bottom of her face, she is drawing your eye out and making her face look wider at the bottom. And in turn, her face looks shorter in the right-hand picture. By the way, if you're liking this content, please let me know by clicking the like button and subscribing to my channel. I try to make content that will be helpful to you, so this does help me to know which content that is. Okay, now let's talk individual features. So I put on this short wig just to show you uh, what I'm talking about with my ears. I have ears that stick out. I don't know if you can tell here. Um, Originally, I thought it was because I'm wearing a wig grip and I figured the wig grip was pushing my ears out. So I carefully cut my wig grip only to discover that no, it's my ears. My ears stick out. My husband loves it. He thinks it's adorable, but sometimes I don't want them to show. So when we take a look at this picture here, you can see on the left, I'm wearing a wig. It's Jamie by Aesthetica and there is no way to cover those ears with that wig. So if I want to de-emphasize those ears, that is not going to be a wig I'm going to choose. In the middle picture, I believe I'm wearing Brie by Henry Margu there. I have the choice to cover part of my ear or all of my ear with that wig. And so I can strategically show off part of my ear like I can do with this one, which is easy does it. Let me just show you here. I can do that and because I have some volume here, you can't really tell that my ear is sticking out because 
there's volume. So it's all about how you style your wig too. So as I said, with this wig here, I can let my ear stick out and I don't feel like it's really sticking out because I have this volume here. In the last wig I'm wearing there, which is Ryan by Aesthetica, it's an asymmetrical look. And so I can let one side hang down and accentuate certain things on my face and draw your attention away from my ears. I can also hide that top part of my ear if I want to. Now I asked my ladies, is there something on your face that you try to de-emphasize? And we're going to take a look at V first. She says she has that one droopy eye. That's what she calls it. And you can see here how she styles to draw your eye more to the other side of her face and de-emphasize that eye. So if we look at this first picture here, which I showed you before, where she added the height to make her face look longer, she also is more open on the side of her face where she feels that eye is bigger and less droopy and so it's drawing your eye in that direction and then she has the hair coming down over the other part of the face de-emphasizing that eye. In this picture here where she's wearing a softer more casual look with the waves and the curls again she opens up that side of her face and puts the height on that side of her face which really draws your eye in that direction. Now Marlene said she wants to de-emphasize the bottom part of her face the jaw and the chin she has a very angular look and it's so funny because I want a more angular look so I tend to wear a lot of stacked styles so it draws your eye down and gives me a sharper line here that's a trick you can use to get more of a line because I have these jowls that seem to be drooping more and more every day so anyway <laughs> with a line that comes straight down along the side of my face it de-emphasizes my jowl and makes it look like a straighter line. For Marlene what we want to do and you can see in this picture is we want to soften that area with some waves or curls it's a great way to do it and it widens that area of her face by drawing your eye out and softening the sharpness of those lines with the waves and the curls. Now in the picture, she does have those waves and curls on the left-hand picture that soften that area as well. In the right-hand picture, what she does, and you can do this also, is she adds an earring right there. And it's a round earring, and it draws your eye out. And again, those are softer lines. So it's all about how you accessorize and use your wigs and jewelry and clothing to emphasize and de-emphasize what you want to show. So I thought that was a really good picture to show you that she can still wear that straight wig against that sharp line, but by adding that earring there, it really softens that look. I thought that was brilliant. Now let's talk about accentuating the features that you like. As we all know, the eyes are the window to the soul and probably the most expressive part of our face. So drawing attention to your eyes can be a great thing to do. So if you take a look at this picture of me, you can see that by using bangs and a layer on the side that ends right where my eyes are, I'm drawing attention to the eye and the cheekbone. The cheekbone is another thing I try to draw attention to. I'm not very angular, but I like it to appear like I have a little bit more of an angle there. So definitely using bangs to draw the attention to the eyes. The other thing I do in that picture is right where my eyes are, I put my hair behind my ears. You can see that there. And I think that makes my eyes stand out a little bit more also. One of the things V does really well to balance out the visual weight of her face, like we said, she has visual weight in the lower part of her face, her nose and her mouth. So one of the things she does to draw your attention to her eyes, aside from opening up with the height of the hair there, she wears a pair of glasses that really accentuates that area and draws your eye to her eyes. Now I know that that's not a wig thing, that's an accessory thing, but in conjunction with the way she styles her wig, I think she does a great job of drawing your eye 
to her eyes and to her cheekbones there. The way that that wig is layered on the side there and ends right at her cheekbone really accentuates that as well. In this picture of Marlene, you can see how having that side swept bang really accentuates the eye and the cheekbone. It draws your eye right to that part of her face. So you can use a curtain bang, you can use a layer, anything that draws your eye there. In this picture of Eileen, she highlights the eyes in the first picture by having her layers end right at the eyes, and in the second picture, through the use of color. And Eileen wears a lot of red colored wigs because they really bring out her eyes, and you can see that the eyes pop there with that color. I will be doing another video that focuses more on color, but I did want to mention that. Now let's talk widow's peaks. Both Marlene and V have widow's peaks, and I asked their opinion on how they handle having a widow's peak. Both of them really own their widow's peak and have no desire to really cover it up. And you'll see in these pictures of V how she actually incorporates the widow's peak into her look. Her part kind of follows the same line and drops down into that widow's peak, creating a very natural looking hairline. Now I've heard that some people try to shave it off or bleach it and do different things and whatever works for you and feels good for you is what you should do. I think a widow's peak can actually be used to make your hairline look more natural. I'd love to hear if you have a widow's peak, what you do and do you accentuate it or do you try to hide it? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so how does all of this information and these tips and tricks help you to choose a wig for your face? Well, first of all, when you're first looking at wigs and you're looking at all these photos of wigs on different people, it can be overwhelming. But by taking a look at your face, your features, your ratios, and deciding what you want to accentuate and de-emphasize, you start to learn the different features that you're looking for. Are you looking for bangs? Are you looking for a shorter or a longer wig? Are you looking for something that will add volume to the sides or to the top? By knowing what you're looking for, you can use filters when you're shopping and filter by texture or by length or whatever you're looking for. And then you can go through the pictures and look to see, do they have bangs? Don't they have bangs? Whatever you're looking for, and you'll have a better idea. Now the wig is just the starting point. Once you get the wig home, you can style it based on what you know now about changing the look of the wig to fit your face. So many times I hear, oh, you look great in every wig, and I'm sure a lot of reviewers hear that, and that's because we put on a lot of wigs and we know how to style it to fit our face and to accentuate what we want to accentuate. In reality, you can look good in so many different wigs once you learn these techniques. Okay, I hope you found this information helpful. I'd love to hear in the comments below what you do to accentuate certain features or de-emphasize certain features. I'm always looking to learn. Okay, so I hope you found this information helpful. Let me know in the comments below, do you try to accentuate certain features or de-emphasize certain features and how do you do that using your wigs and accessories? If you haven't joined my private Facebook group, we have many women over there sharing tips and tricks and showing themselves in wigs and you can compare your face to other people's faces and hopefully that will help you to choose better. Also, my entire team has pictures with their measurements up over there, so you can look at any team member and know if their face is similar to yours. So if you know that your face is more similar to one of us, you can go take a look at wigs on that person, and that may help you to make your decision as well. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.